Hello guys and gals and welcome. Um, so as you can see clearly by my background, um, I am going to be going over how to play Diablo 1. Um, Diablo 1 is a little bit difficult to get working. It's an older game. It, I mean, it literally came out in, what, 1998. Um, it's not exactly the most stable game. It crashes sometimes. It's hard to alt-tab. There's some issues with the gateway servers. On top of that, there's also some problems with connecting to games if you don't have your settings correct. I'm going to go over everything with you as quickly as I can and show you exactly what you need to know to, um, well, get the game running. Um, I recently just did a live stream going over the fact that Battle.net is up again. Well, Battle.net is up, but you might have to configure Battle.net, and we're going to go over all of that today. First off, let's just go ahead and open the game. Now, when you open the game, um, what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to connect it to Battle.net. Well, Battle.net um, is currently active. However, when you connect to Battle.net, it might not work. Um, right here, you see how it says global? Um, it should say global. If it says U.S. East, U.S. West, or Asia, or if it doesn't say global, or for some reason you're having trouble connecting, um, we're going to have to get your gateway situated properly. Um, also, there's another error message, which sometimes happens when you log in, um, basically telling you you have a UDP problem. Um, and, um, well, we're going to fix that too. You also need to make yourself an account, obviously. Uh, once you get your account created, you can make your characters on here. Um, let's go over fixing uh, the gateway problem first. The gateway problem, I will have a link in the description for you guys. Um, it is on the official forums. It's very easy to follow, and I'm going to show you guys that uh, right now. So right here, um, this is the uh, the page, and like I said, I'll link it in the description for you guys. It's a very easy fix. Uh, first off, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the uh, start menu. You're going to click on search, and you're going to type in regedit or registry editor, and it's going to pull up the registry editor. Um, you're going to want to right-click on the registry editor and click on run as administrator, though, uh, because if you don't run it as administrator, you might not be able to edit the file. Sometimes registry editor is fin eh, finicky that way. Um, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to find the location within the registry. It's not really all that complicated. Don't get scared. Yeah, they're just folders. That's really all they are. It's just a folder within a folder. Um, you're going to open up the H key current key uh, user right here, H key current user. Um, then you're going to scroll down to you're going to find the uh, software, which is right here. Um, then once you open up software, you're going to look for battle.net right there. Open that up, and you're going to find a Diablo 1 right there, D1. And then you're going to look at Configuration. Configuration is right here. Um, and inside of Configuration, you're going to find a Battle.net Gateways. Um, now, if you open this up and you have the old gateways, which are listed right here, U.S. West, U.S. East, uh, Asia, etc., you're going to delete all that. Just delete that from the bar. Um, here is the new information right here, 2001 connect-forever.classic.blizzard.com, 8 global. Um, this is the new server. You're going to copy this. Um, and then once you have it copied, you're going to paste that into the box in the registry editor like so, um, and then you're going to click OK. Um, you might get a little error message or whatever. That's perfectly fine. Just open it back up and make sure that it's actually in there, um, and you are good to go. Um, once you've done this, you can close this out. This will now allow you to connect properly to the new global gateway, which will allow you to update the game and will allow you to get access to Battle.net. Um, that's number one. Number two um, is the uh, fixing the alt tabbing, crashing, and other issues. This one is actually really easy. I'll have this link down in the description for you as well. Uh, this is uh, Funky Fresh uh, CNC DD Draw. This has been tested with the new version as well as the good old games version, both of them. Um, the Literally the new version that just released in January 2024 has been tested for that as well. Um, all you got to do is you download this zip file right here. You may have to download WinRAR or 7-Zip uh, to actually extract it. Depends on what you're running and whether you have any kind of extraction software on your computer. I use WinRAR. That's what I'm using. You could use 7-Zip. It doesn't matter. Once you have this file downloaded, you're going to open it. Um, and you're going to be presented with these files. We're going to take these and we're going to copy them into the directory. Now, the easiest way to do this is honestly just right-click on the Diablo shortcut, either one of them, and click Open File Location, and that's going to take you to 
the directory, which in my case is C program files uh, x86 Diablo. Uh, depending on where you have it installed, doesn't really matter, just find where you have it installed. Then what you're going to do is you're going to highlight the shaders, CNC draw config.exe, ddraw.dll, and ddraw.ini, and you're going to paste those here. And bam, now we're done. Um, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, you can go into the config, but I honestly would recommend that you don't because I've played around with this myself, kind of messing around with different settings, and let me tell you, none of it really works all that well. Um, the settings that you have here are pretty much what you're going to get. Um, on top of that, it does have some hotkeys like uh, maximizing the window um, and so forth and so on. You can rebind these if you want to. Um, a lot of this stuff doesn't really quite work. Um, honestly, really just copy these in here and just get Diablo running. Um, it'll allow you to alt-tab without the game crashing, which I think is the biggest thing. And it makes the game more stable overall. Um, as you can see here, it says, Note to Blizzard and GOG staff. If you guys happen to see this, you're free to include the ddraw.dll and the ddraw.ini in your installers without any fees. In other words, he's literally saying, please use this. It makes the game more stable. Um, next, uh, to, uh, so to fix the UDP error. So the UDP error is actually pretty easy to fix. Uh, you basically just need to set up a port forwarding rule on your router. Um, it's not really all that difficult. The most difficult thing is really just figuring out what your router IP address is and whatnot. Um, the easiest way to do this, honestly, like 100% easiest way, is to just look at the sticker on the back of your router. Um, if I just type in sticker on back of router... Um, I can probably pull up a hundred different stickers here and give you an idea of what you're looking for. Um, and, uh, you know, here's one right here. Let's look at this one. So we have here uh, your Wi-Fi network, your Wi-Fi password right there. See how it says to access the settings page of this router, 192.168.0.1. Right, and your settings password, which has been blacked out, is listed right here. Um, there's a bunch of these. Uh, like different routers have different uh, different ones, but every one that you go to is going to be roughly the same. Um, they're going to have a link address, or it may be a link web page. Some of them have a web page. Some of them will say like uh, TP Link uh, Router dot com or something. Um, it really depends on the router. Um, in this particular case. It doesn't look like it has it up here. Um, now, there is another way to find it if your router doesn't have it listed. Um, and it's actually surprisingly easy. But uh, here we go. Here's another one right here. So this one is pretty simple, as you can see here. Um, IP address uh, is HTTP colon slash slash 10.0.0.2. Username is admin. Password is admin. So it gives you the information you need to log into your router. Uh, there is another way to find your address for your router, um, which is pretty easy in my opinion, and that is going to the command prompt. So same way we pulled up regedit earlier, go to the command prompt in the search and type in CMD um, and open up the command prompt. And you're going to go to uh, the, the black window here and we're going to type in IP slash or sorry, IP config slash all. Um, and you're going to look for your device, which in my case, it's an Ethernet cable. So this is a wired, I'm wired internet, which is faster, of course. Um, and if you're Wi-Fi, you're going to look for the Wi-Fi adapter. Um, and then what you're going to look for is default gateway. See where it says default gateway here? Um, and then you're going to look for that address. So as you can see, my gateway is 192.168.0.1. The gateway is almost always your router um, without fail. So in this particular case, I could take my 192.168.0.1 and I can type that into my box here. So 192.168.0.1. Um, and using the password and the username from the back of my router, which I'm not going to show you uh, because I have that saved into my computer, I can log into my router. And once I've logged into my router, I can go down to advanced, port forwarding, um, and in my particular case, and you may have this issue too, um, it says managing your home record settings is now easier than ever. Visit wifi.cox.com to set up port forwards among uh, many other features. And this takes you to a page that basically tells you to download an app. Now, in my particular case, how I found out um, that I could do this, which I can't really show you uh, because I can't really show you my phone, but it's, um, it's very easy. 
This basically what it does is let me pull this up. Um, basically, you're going to go to this little app, um, and you're going to pull up the Wi-Fi. So you're going to go to your actual Wi-Fi connection on your app. Um, then you're going to go to View Equipment. Then you're going to go to Advanced Settings. And then you will have an option for port forwarding, which is going to be identical to what you would see if it actually had an option for port forwarding here. It's just annoying that you have to go through the app to do it. Um, once you have this here and you have your port forwarding open and you can set up the port forwarding, basically what you're doing at this point is you're going to set up a port forwarding rule. It's very simple. You're going to set up between the ranges of 6112 to 6119, which includes 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, etc. You're going to set up a port forwarding range. If you can't do a range, you're going to do each individual port um, for both TCP and UDP. Um, and some routers require that you use your IP address for your computer that you're forwarding these ports to, uh, which is very simple. The same way that we found out the IP address of the router, you can use the same command prompt to find out your particular IP address. Now, one thing I will recommend is that um, sometimes this, like if they require a specific address, for the port forwarding, you might want to set up a static IP address. Notice how mine says preferred next to it. It's because I set up a static IP address. You can do this relatively easily within the program while you're setting this up and give yourself a static IP address. Um, it's actually super easy to do. And let me see if I can show you this real quick too. Uh, so if you go down to connections and uh, you can go down to connected devices, that's what I was looking for, um, and you can set up whether or not your connected device is going to be DHCP or not, right? So if I wanted to give an address a specific device, it doesn't really matter what, like say I wanted my phone to have a specific address, um, I could set up a specific address for my phone um, by going reserved IP address, and then I could put in a reserved IP address here, which would, of course, give you what you're looking for. Um, this is going to set up a static IP address for your device so it doesn't change, so that when you set up this, your port forwarding range, it doesn't undo itself. And you might be asking, well, why would it undo itself? Well, basically, this is a when you, when you have this selected, which is DHCP, it's a random address that's given to you. Um, at any given time. And it changes depending on when you connect and reconnect or when the lease expires. So it's going to give you a different address every single time. And that's perfectly fine normally if you don't have an issue with this sort of stuff. But if you're setting up port forwarding, you want to have a static IP address. I like to have a static IP address anyway. I think it's better, to be perfectly honest, to set up statics. Setting up static through here is an easier way to do it. Obviously, every router is going to be a little bit different. But if you're familiar with setting up a static IP address or maybe yours is a little bit different, different. Um, I'm sure that you could probably just Google um, setting up a static IP address for my PC. And there's probably like a thousand guides out there because it's a pretty common thing. Um, but once you get your port forwarding set up, you want 6112 to 6119. Um, and you want UDP and TCP. So you want both. Um, if it doesn't let you do both, then set up a rule for both. So set up a 6112 to 6119 TCP and then set up another one, which is 6112 to 6119 UDP. And then finally, the last thing. So this is the firewall that's built into your router, OK? There is, however, another firewall built into Windows. And you may have to set up a rule inside of your firewall uh, for that. And let me show you how to do the Windows firewall real quick. That's the last step in this. Now, I usually have my firewall turned off because I rely on the firewall in the router itself. Uh, but if you go to the firewall um, and you go down to allow an app through the firewall, um, and then you go to change settings, 
Um, you can add an app. Um, you can actually choose the shortcut that I have on my desktop here. So if I just go to my desktop and I scroll to Diablo, I can add that into the program. And you can see it's already in there, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, and if I go down to D, which I just type in D, it'll bring it down. And as you can see, I have it added as an exception in the firewall program. The firewall program can also block the game. Uh, so make sure that the firewall program is not blocking the game either. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, once you have these things set up, once you've got your funky fresh, um, it's going to make the game a lot more stable so you're not crashing all the time. Once you get your global uh, Battle.net server set up, you can connect to the global Battle.net server. And um, once you have your uh, for port forwarding set up, you can connect to games just fine. Believe it or not, even without setting this up, you can still connect to some games. I've done it before. But if you want to connect to all games and have everybody be able to join you, you're going to want to uh, get this set up as well. It's, it's honestly pretty easy. All of this, uh, I literally went over all this in, what, 16 minutes? Um, and honestly, you could probably do it in less than that if you're quick. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when we're just talking about getting Diablo 1 set up so we can play online and dupe some items. And uh, as always, keep watching.